Happy holidays, everybody. It's the New Year's edition of the top 25 from Cigar Aficionado of 2023. We're gonna be going through all these cigars, giving you our thoughts on the cigars, if we've smoked them, and where they deserve their ranking, if they deserve their ranking. And we're smoking a couple of them, all next on the Zeal Cigar Review. Well, JB, as you look through this list, your scowl on your face gives a little bit of brevity and weightiness to the situation at hand. And that is we're dealing with the number one top 25 list of 2023 provided by Cigar Aficionado. JB, how do you feel about this list? I'm not as angry about this list as I normally would be. Okay. I'll All be right. honest about that. We've had many cigars on this list, correct? Uh, a lot of them actually. Yes, we have. And yes, there's we have. a lot of cigars on here that haven't been on the list. Which that, was kind of cool. That's true. Well, I broke out the white hoodie because I'm feeling in a uh, snowy mood, if you would. It's freezing cold in Arizona, but I still got shorts on under here. And JB didn't want to turn on the main fan because he's obviously cold in his skinny self. I'm not skinny. You can figure that out on your own. But we're going to jump in with the two cigars we're going to be smoking today. And then we're going to cut light and smoke. And then we're going to evaluate everything on this list for your viewing pleasure. So, but first... To introduce you to our cigars, we've got a cut light in. Smoke. JB, you're gonna be smoking the? Alec Bradley Prensado. Yes, it's not the actual size the tor torpedo one. Yeah, but I mean, but how, it's how much different is it having a freaking it can't point be. and not having a it point? It can't be, that's, that's, a po that's a point where size really does not matter. I, on the other hand, am smoking for the absolute third time in a row, for whatever reason, this is the Foreign Affair by Luciano. This got rated, and I have consistently said this cigar is completely overrated, and I love all Luciano stuff except for this little nugget of a cigar. But I'm gonna go ahead and smoke it. I don't know if this is the exact size, it's really close to the size, believe it or not. If this is the exact size that got the 93 rating or whatever else they threw on there, it's the Corona. I think this is the Corona. Nah, that's the Robusto. This is the Robusto? Okay. Well, the Corona is just slightly smaller than this. And uh, does size really matter? I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but. Well, I'm gonna cut my, I'm gonna cut my cigar. I'm actually not gonna cut it. I'm gonna punch it with a brand new lighter that Zyphe sent us to check out. This is the Zyphe. This is just crazy, dude. Look how good this lighter feels really good. It's got four flint, four burners on it. Nice, strong flame. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that against my white thing. You see the flame right there. Super easy pull down trigger and it's got a punch. Look at that on the bottom, which I'm gonna use for my cigar. People give Alec Bradley kind of some crap a lot. At least people that I talk to on a regular basis. I feel like a lot of people say weird stuff about Alec Bradley. Like, no, nah, I don't like their cigars. And it, it's so weird to me because I enjoy most of their cigars and was actually kind of afraid when they got purchased by General. So we'll see. I will reserve my judgment at this point so as to not incriminate myself either with General or Alec Bradley. But yeah, so the Prince Otto got number eight, I believe. Okay, well, let's go through the top. Let's go, let's start, let's start from number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start from number one. Tell us the number one, JB. Uh, was the Fuente Fuente Opus X Reserva de Chateau. So yeah. something that you if you can find, yeah. <laughs> good on you. Exactly, exactly. So uh, this got number one. Uh, this happens a lot. I know Fuente's got number one before as well with the Eye of the Shark, not not too long ago, I believe. And uh, I've had the, the I've had this exact cigar before. I had it exact exactly sometime this year. Somebody had gifted me one. Uh, I thought it was a good cigar. Did it deserve number one cigar? Not a chance. Not a chance. Well, uh, I really don't think so. What was it? I blindfolded you with the Asylum mm -hmm. 13 mm -hmm. Natural and mm -hmm. an Angel Share, and you actually picked the Asylum over was, the Angel it Share. It was the Medulla Oblongata. Yeah. yeah. It was the Medulla Oblongata. It was the Oblongata part or whatever. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, that's a 10 times better cigar than this cigar. So why you would pick this over the Asylum, I don't know why, but uh, I don't know if there's advertising involved in it or anything else like that. I'm just being honest with you. Status, dude. You know, it's, you it's know how it status. is, dude. I People know. want to smoke something that says something on it. Most people do, but as your Blue Collar Review hosts, we don't really care about labels. We care about quality and taste. How's that cigar treat you so far? A little bit earthy, a little bit of coffee up front, but mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty good so far. I always used to say this looked like a football. I was always like, this, it is, does the look like a football. this is the football cigar. It does look like a football. Uh, this isn't as bad as I remember. It's actually quite good, to be honest with you. So I smoked it twice before. I didn't necessarily appreciate it. But um, yeah, it's got some good nuttiness on it. Very nutty. Very nutty. Nice, some, some nice coffee notes, too. So, all right, number two, JB. Uh, the Padron Siri 1926, number 48 Maduro. I've 
I actually smoked a Padron last night. Okay. Um, I don't know which one it was because it was left over from that video that Carl did with us where he took all the bands off. Well, we smoked a 26 on that video. No, we I didn't? smoked the 50th anniversary on that video. Didn't I smoke a 26? Maybe the natural. I believe I smoked a natural. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if uh, I don't know which one I smoked. Right. The ones that were left was right. the 26, mm -hmm. the 46, mm -hmm. and the Family Reserve. Yeah. So I smoked one of those three Maduros last night, and uh, you know, it's okay. As Padron esque Family Reserve as my hoodie looks, if you look at the Family Reserve tubos and what have you, I will say this: Padron is completely overrated in every way, shape, and form. I just think that I've said that a million times on on previous. You know, episodes of this exact show. It's completely overrated. There's a thousand other cigars out there that are better than Padrones, but because they're one of the oldest companies, they have to lock down the market. I don't know what they what their agreement is with Cigar Aficionado, but for whatever reason, this doesn't deserve number two in my personal opinion. What about you? No, I wouldn't. I would not. Especially like, I mean, we we evaluate things a little different here, differently here though. Like we look at like the value, right, of right. the cigar, not Absolutely. just. How did it taste blindfolded? Well, as a status symbol, sure. Yeah. Sure, it's a great status symbol. So if you're if you're into status symbols and everything else like that, and you're trying to overcompensate for other areas of your life, smoke Padron. You want to tell people how you really feel? I'm telling you, dude. So many people come, so many people talk about Padron this, Padron dude, that, Padron this, Padron it's that. It's funny when people come and you're like, they're like, do you have Padron? And they'll stick their nose up in the air. And when you say no, and then they like act like they don't want to look for anything else. And you're like, dude, let me just blindfold you on video. Now what's funnier, is when I actually turn them on to another cigar that's better than Padron, and they get super excited about it, right? Because it's ten dollars and not twenty. Yeah, exactly. So, anyways, number three was uh, something that I I wasn't super impressed by when I smoked it. No, not at all. Yeah, the Milano V. So overrated. Uh, Oliva does make some good cigars, but the Milano, but Milani, Milana, Mil Mil Milano, Mil the Milano V. Uh, I just think it's I think it's overplayed. I, I don't think that's it's it, kind of boring. It's very boring. It's very one dimensional. It doesn't transition at all. But it 10, is a 000, good smooth smoke. 10,000 other cigars out there that are better. And I'll say this. The Milano is very Padron-esque. If you like Padrones, get a Milano. It's, a, it's, it's almost the same cigar. I would right? pick. I would I will. I'll be honest about this. I'll take the Padron over the Milano. Of course. Because it has more body, a little right, bit more right, flavor right. to it. It's not one dimensional. And it's so a status I'll be honest symbol. about that. Yeah, it's a status symbol. I get it. Um, you need status. I understand. I would actually pick the number four cigar over all three of those. I have a problem with the number four cigar, but he's absolutely right. The number four cigar is the Rocky Patel ALR uh, second edition Toro. The Mexican San Andreas. Yes, I've had that cigar. I think it's well worth the price points that it's at. Very good. I think it's a very good cigar. Uh, all you guys that are that are avid cigar smokers out that out there know this. That's Rocky back in the day was amazing cigars. And then today, it's not nearly as good quality as we came to know and to fall in love with that brand necessarily. You know, I want to say something about that though. I would say it's because he's had some of those blends for so long and there's so many uh, new things coming out, mm -hmm. it would only make sense that something that was a little bit newer to his portfolio would show up on here. Sure, sure. It's like the 1990. That was the first cigar we ever smoked. Yeah. I smoked that 18 years ago. Right. 18 years ago. Dude, and it was so much better 18 years ago. Well, it just was. But and, and that's not because my palate. different cigars out then, too. Sure, sure. And and blends change and everything else like that. But Rocky does have some banger blends, and we all know that. And ALR is no exception to that rule. I think it's a great placement on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay, number five. Dude, that new EP Carrillo Allegiance, man. The AJ Fernandez partnership, I think, wasn't it? I'm not exactly sure. I will say this, though. That's a great cigar. It absolutely deserves to be on the list. Anything by E.P. Carrillo is always good, to be honest with you, from his inch all the way to the Oh, no, the, the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. That was the AJ. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, this was just the Allegiance. The yeah, Green the Band. Allegiance is great. The green label is cigar. beautiful. It's a wonderful cigar. Absolutely great. Anything from EPC absolutely needs to be on this list because his stuff is just banging great. I think, I think it's great. All right, number six. Uh, actually, one of the first times that a Cuban hasn't been in the top five. You know, I will say this. And maybe Cigar Fish now is listening to these podcasts, which I know he's not. But, and like, he's like, <laughs> Cigar Fish now is a dude sitting around. <laughs> one of the things that I think, I think Cigar Fish now is thinking through here with this not being in the top five is they actually need to do what I recommended a long time ago, have a Cuban list and then have an everything else list. That's what they need to do. But they won't do that, although so many of us would be interested in it. But they won't do that because it's just easier to do a top 25. But whatever reason, I think the Cuban list would be better. You know what's weird about that that I didn't think about? What? We're the only ones that can complain about that. 
What do you mean? Because all the other countries that see this list can get the Cubans. <laughs> right? We're the only ones that can't. I mean, we can, but but the we can't. Re- But the issue is... Also, America is number one in buying cigars overall. Right, right. I mean, we That's buy more the, cigars here in America than all the whole world combined, you yeah. know, from, from what I understand Although, as far as the numbers. Although, dude, the beer-drinking Germans are getting close, bro. Cigars are getting nutty over there. Anyways, um, on to number seven. Blackened by Drew Estates. I don't think this deserved a top ten in my personal opinion. This is a conspiracy against McAuliffe cigars, okay, because the McAuliffe Black was ten times better than the... Blacken M81 by that. And that's not because I'm not a Metallica fan. I love James Hatfield. I love Metallica. I think it's great. Drew Estates. Yeah. It, I, Drew Estates. I'm a big fan of you, too. But completely got it wrong on this one. And it seems a little like there's. Number eight is the Alec Bradley Prince Auto. Um, so number eight. That's a top uh, ten cigar. I'll uh, let you know when I'm done smoking it if it belongs. How's in the it? Top how's 10. it turning up right now? It's not bad, man. Okay. It's um very medium. Mm-hmm. Very medium. That's the best way I can say it. Okay. All right. Okay. That works. All right. Number nine. Uh, the La Aroma de Cuba Mi Amora Bellicoso. I actually say that five re- times fast. <laughs> <laughs> the La Aroma de Cuba Mi Amora Bellicoso. Oh. Uh, the La Aroma si, de senor. Cuba Mi Amora Bellicoso. Okay. Don't say it five times. Just that's enough. Okay. Because I'll get it faster. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I remember smoking this when they yes. brought it into us because I I remember it asking you like, mm-hmm. dude, is that blue labeled thing coming in from, from La Aroma or mm-hmm. something? Or, uh, I do remember that cigar. It was very very good. It I was a good cigar. I don't remember much more, but I would say that's probably one that I could say probably, probably would be on the list. Absolutely, and it's a very very good cigar. I remember having it. So does it does it belong on the list? Yes. In the top ten. Up for debate, but what should it be on the list? 100. percent It's a very good cigar. All right, number uh, number 10. El Popo Bellicoso Grande. It's a Mexican San Andreas. I know nothing about that cigar. Never Don't know heard anything of it. about it. Don't know anything about Apparently it. Apparently, it's good. Yes, evidently. Tell right. me if you smoked it. <laughs> number number 11. Uh, we're going uh, Romeo Julieta Lena de Oro Hildalgos. Now say that five times fast. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, that's a Cuban cigar, obviously. Yep. Uh, I've never had that one either, so I couldn't give you any kind of insight on it whatsoever. But go ahead and. Uh, it's probably good. Yeah. Uh, number twelve. I've seen this one on the on the list a couple times. It's the Trinidad Esperita. I think that's how you say it. Esperita. Esperita series number one. Mm-hmm. I did not enjoy that cigar when I smoked it. I had it as well, and I did not like it either. So, which yeah. is which is interesting because. Uh, we're kind of a fair judge of cigars, and uh, I've had other Trinidad's I really actually did enjoy. So I didn't, I didn't actually enjoy that one necessarily. It was, it was like it was too much spice and stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, it, like it was trying too hard yeah. to mix up everything. That's what I remember about it. Yeah, it was a yeah. little, little harsh. Yeah, that's that's true. Number thirteen, uh, Le Bajou, nineteen twenty-two hundred años, La Corona Especial. So that that cigar, uh, I believe, is a smaller version than the 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 one that gets all the rankings, the Torpedo. Uh, if you would, so mm. uh, what is that like a a six and a half by forty four? It's almost like a Lancero essentially. So a lot of these guys are going to Lanceros because a lot there's there is a a growing market for Lanceros, and there has been over the last ten years in the cigar industry. The blend differs from the core Le Bajou line. Okay, so it does differ from the like, the, the, the main Le Bajou line with what? I don't What's know. It, it them. I don't know. If you've had this cigar, let us know. So, but we know Le Bajou is a top performer, a very very good cigar. Anything, most stuff that my father makes is 10 times better than your Padrones out there. So my father is one of the best companies out there to be smoking at this point in history. Nicaraguan tobacco, some of the best. They make all Tatawahi stuff. I'm absolutely certain and very, very confident saying that my father is probably going to be one of the best cigar brands in the next 20 years going forward. Absolutely, unequivocally. Uh, Long live the queen. Ace of Hearts by Caldwell. Um, I have not smoked that, but I can tell you that anything that I have had from Caldwell has been extremely impressive. Robert Caldwell is a mad scientist and a genius when it comes to making cigars and or blending cigars. Uh, I love what he does. I love everything that he that he stands for. He's just a, he's a really good guy. I've talked to him several times personally. I think he's a great guy, and I think he's got a really good company on his hands. Uh, I've not had this cigar. I'm looking forward to it at some point. It doesn't surprise me it's number 14 because the guy is brilliant when it comes to design and excellent when it comes to blending so every cigar every cigar i've had from caldwell i think i've actually liked every uh, single I haven't cigar smoked one i didn't like right absolutely absolutely yeah. so uh number 15 uh the ashton vsg 
Solid. The only Ashton that I smoke. Sa 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 it's so good. Solid performer. Solid so performer. Good. It's would... such a very, it's a, such a very, very good cigar. I can't, I can't tell you that there's anything wrong with that choice. Uh, now, with it being at 15, uh, it's always a little higher. Yeah, honest. it's always high on the list somewhere. But yeah, 15, I'm not sure. But I will say, it's a very, very good cigar. Yeah, there's a couple I could easily bump down a little bit and move mm -hmm. that up. Uh, well, we had 16. 16 is the Cohiba Prima Des Extra. Okay, so like like the Bahinki. It's a Cuban. Okay, yeah. it's a Cuban. We've not had that one either, so. Um, uh, 17, the Monte Cristo 1935 Anniversary Edition. Um, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. Uh, not had it. Um, can't judge it. Made Just, by AJ. Yeah. If you've had, drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Yeah, I mean, Monte okay. Cristo's pretty solid. I would imagine that's a decent smoke. Mm-hmm. Um... Number 18 is uh, Tatawaje Miami Havana Casadores. Have, so. have had mul multiple of those. They're very long, big cigars. Yep. Uh, I think they're I think they're good. Uh, do they deserve a top 18? I mean, it's my father squared, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you can't make, my father doesn't make bad cigars. It's a very, very good cigar. So uh, yeah, sure, Tatawaje. It's a good cigar, definitely. Should be on the list. So uh, number 19. Uh, the Foreign Affair, what you're smoking. <laughs> By Luciano, or Luciano, however you want to say it. Again, say Luciano. a very good cigar. Luciano. Nowhere near the top 25 in my opinion, but a very good cigar. And I'm just being fair. It doesn't mean I don't like Luciano. I love Luciano, but I'm probably wrong. And this also goes to show you this is super, super, super opinionated. <laughs> subjective. Okay, it's all subjective. So if you're taking everything that we say very serious and you're a brand out there, you're going to call me and be like, you shouldn't have said this about our brand. Dude, it's all subjective. Enjoy it. Calm down. Relax. Have some scotch or a bourbon with your cigar. Calm down. Yeah, I'm waiting to see how many people watch this video and they're like, oh, who are you guys to... And we're just sitting back here laughing like, dude, we're, nobody's trying to do anything. <laughs> we're just, just enjoying ourselves, just dude. Just giving Calm you down. our opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, number 20, uh, I don't I don't think this belongs on the list personally, and I hate saying that because I love the company and I of love course. their cigars. Of course. Uh, but the Olomec, it just it didn't impress the me. The most I, overrated yeah. thing that, that Nick Malia... Ma Millennium? What did he say his last name? Millennium? Nick Millennium? I don't know. Uh, Nick has ever released. I think it's really overrated. I think it's an okay cigar. I don't think it's a great cigar. Uh, I didn't yeah. think it was. I didn't think of that that when I smoked it. You can go back to the other video, video footage and see that I, I didn't think it was all that great then. I still don't think it belongs on this list. Uh, everything else he makes, from the Wise Men to the uh, Tabernacle, the Havana Seed, incredible, incredible cigars. But this one, not so much. In my opinion... Mm. Opinion, okay. Number twenty-one. This is actually one of my favorite cigars. Mainstream. LFD. But it's also in the Lancero. The, the LFD double Lancero. The double Lancero. Yep. Okay. The Lancero. So again, two Lanceros have made this list so far. So with that being said, you can see that people are wanting to get Lanceros a little bit, which is really interesting because the case to be made with Lanceros in particular is the more wrapper leaf versus the filler and binder. So that's why, and, and since so much of the flavor of a cigar comes from the wrapper leaf, you're thinking because it's so thin and because it's so much more wrapper leaf, you're gonna get more flavor. So maybe that's the case, I don't know. I've never been a Lancero guy myself, but, <coughs> excuse me. Not unless it's a tabernacle. <clears throat> I like the tabernacle. Well, I don't know if I have that. Oh, it's so good in the Lanzado. Mm. And you said that with an accent, too. Kind of yeah, that sounds creepy. Okay. Uh, 22. 22. The Ozinger Family Cigars Bosuf Bosufers? Bosphorus? B Bosphorus? B How do you say that? Bosphorus B-52? Uh, yeah. That's a good cigar. Yeah, good cigar. Yeah, JB's had it. I've not had it. We got a Maduro in here, but I've not had that one. What did you think about the cigar when we smoked it? Uh, it's, it's a really good smoke. I enjoyed it. I smoked it. Pretty much, I was here on Tuesday night just labeling stuff and smoking it, mm -hmm. and smoked it pretty much down till it burnt my fingers. Okay, nice. Yeah, nice. so uh, I would say that one probably deserves a little bit of a bump. Okay. Personally. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, the Rafael Gonzalez Corona de Longsdale. Number 23. Another number, Cuban. Yeah, another Cuban. Not smoked it. Can't tell anything about it. Uh, I guess it's okay. Uh, number 24. The Padilla Miami 8 and 11 Churchill. So it's rolled at El Titan. Just so you understand, JB, that's called Padilla, not Padilla. Padilla. Quesadilla, Quesadilla. What are you going to call it? Padilla. Padilla. Padilla, Padilla, 
Tomato, tomato. What do you guys English think? English is the dumbest language ever created. <laughs> it is. It is. It's the hardest one to learn, too, actually. So uh, that's why it takes us 12 years to get the language right. <laughs> Dude, I had like, I took like four years of German. Uh-huh. Three years. Yeah. Three years of German. Yeah, you had it down in like a year. Oh, dude, I yeah. had way better grades in German than I did in English class. Of course. It's the most complicated language. Uh, the Padilla Miami, uh, the, it's an El Titan cigar. I mean, it's, it's rolled it. here. Don't know anything about it. Never had it. I believe it's pretty good, though. Uh, and and a 25. 25. This is a little controversial one for us. Well, we haven't little. smoked this one, We've though. not smoked this one before. This is the West Tampa the red, red. Which is a Mexican San Andreas. Yes, yes. We've not had that. We've had the other West Tampans, Tampas, the uh, the Maduro. Connecticut and the Maduro. What were your thoughts on the West Tampa? Uh, for considering who blended the cigar, mm -hmm. I was disappointed. Same here. I was very Same disappointed. Here. I expected so much more. I really did. and uh, I think my exact comment to you was, this just goes to show you, doesn't matter who the blender is, it matters whose tobacco they have access to. Good point. Very, very good point. Very, very good point. Uh, big fan of Ricky, and I think I think his company will do well. Uh, but realistically, I, I've not had this cigar, so I can't judge the cigar. What I did have, I didn't necessarily think was all that in a bag of chips. But that's our opinion of the top 25. We want to hear your opinion of the top 25 in the comment section below. But we're going to tell you, finally, what we think about these cigars, and JB's going to go first. JB, you have the floor. Um, I'll be really honest, man. It's a good smoke, not deserving of a top 10. Okay. I don't think so. I mean, when you're, putting, when you're putting this up against every cigar that's out there right now, you're talking like uh, the CAO Pilon. Right. Amazing cigar. Right. Uh, well, it, it's, it, but this is, let me even just Even like the BX, even some of the stuff in their own line. Right. Like the broad, the double broadleaf, mm -hmm. the um, black market. Mm -hmm. I personally would prefer both of those cigars over this one. Right, right. Yeah. It's a very good smoke. I mean, look at it. I mean, look at this ash. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just very medium. Leathery, a little bit of cocoa, some earthiness. Um, pretty good. I mean, a lot of people would enjoy it. I think if I think if there's a lot of people out there that don't smoke Alec Bradley or Alec and Bradley for some reason, mm -hmm. you should try more of their cigars because mm -hmm. I think they make really good cigars, personally. Well, the Ford Affair uh, is better than I remember. Um, does it belong in the top 25 list, in my personal opinion? Not necessarily, but I could see it at 26. I definitely could. It's a very, very good cigar. I don't think it's the best cigar I've ever had. I definitely don't think it's the worst don't cigar I've ever had. Uh, no, I, I love Ed and I love all the guys that work at Luciano. They're great people. And I think of all the cigars, this is this is my least favorite. But all their other ones, I mean, the Maria Lucia, the Dreamer, I mean, everything else, the, the me, the me, what's it called? The me, uh, for what it's Mas called. Mas Ignatius. The Mas Ignatius. I think that's an incredible cigar as well. The um, Oh, the Turkish tobacco. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's a the, lot of uh, the, Which is the Istanbul. Mm -hmm. um, the Dele. But remember. The Panda. Uh, okay, yes, yes. Okay, hold on. Here's the thing, though. Not, I don't know, to be honest, how they choose everything at Cigar Aficionado. Like, or how they and, and, get the cigars? And like, how did they, Luciano decide to send that one? Right. I, I don't know how manufacturers do all that. Because they tell you a little bit down there, like, they send in. And so it has to be submitted. So I know there's guys like Steve Saka that doesn't don't submit his his stuff there. And there's probably other guys that don't submit their stuff there. So yeah, you can also look at... Yeah, doesn't either. Yeah. I don't think. I think, I think you can look at other... Uh, different different top twenty five lists and everybody has them out there. Uh, we don't necessarily put those things out there because I don't want I don't want to try to compete with everybody else out there. But uh, for your top twenty five, drop drop a list. Here's here's my question for you guys. Drop a list of your top five cigars for twenty twenty three in the comment section below, and you'll find us debating with you down there mm. if your list is anywhere close to our list. So for the Zill Cigar Review, I'm Bradley. This is JB. We're out of here like last year. Peace.